when I was a child, I think like six, seven years old, I really had very often fantasies about death and how it would be that I would not be there anymore. And I really imagined it like being put under the, put under the earth, um, being still alive in some box in total darkness. And I, I, I remember it so well, I was so afraid as a child. To go to sleep and never wake up. To be simply not there forever and ever. So yeah, this May I traveled with my wife Sophia to Italy. Um, I was very surprised by how beautiful, diverse and magnificent uh, Italy is. So connected with the topic traveling to Italy where a lot of uh, refugees now coming in who are traveling over the sea and we know that not all of them make it. Um, I had a strange feeling about like making holidays in Italy and I, I, so I was thinking about a lot of these topics and co in this combination of all these elements I came to the um, topic of memento mori which I discovered last year I think. It was, a, it was an old saying um, when a general came back from ancient Rome um, he, he won a lot of fights. He won every fight you could win. And so there was one guy who came to him and said, listen, memento mori, you will die one day. Remember, you're not a god. You're not a god. You're a human. You will die one day. This will not last forever. there's so many great architectural pieces that are completely abandoned and there's a strange feeling when you go in, into something like that. Um, there's something about those places which makes you very calm and you feel, I don't know, relaxed, chilled. Then there was this um, crazy architectural building next to Rome which looks so spooky, um, which is, um, was by an old architect um, who lived there until 1996 and then passed away. And I just saw these images and thought, man, this, this building is so amazing. We just definitely have to go there. So we traveled a lot with a car and went all to these amazing um, places. And Sophia did a great job in assisting me. And um, sometimes it was very spooky for her too. So um, yeah, yeah, because we were like in old military buildings and there were like really prisons in there. And it was like so cold in there. There was like freezing ice, icy wind coming out. So that was a crazy time. Many people ask, oh, how did you get the idea to do this shot there? And how did you get the idea? Where did you write it in the script? But um, at Memento Mori, like in many of my other movies, it's a combination of both. There's a feeling, there's a picture, like the picture from the lake, uh, the, the knowing that I go to the old man and, and film with him, the combination of lost places. And all that intuitively leads you to some kind of emotion where you film something. Um, um, like um, I filmed this one fence, this old military fence where I put um, a round motion. And I didn't know why I filmed this actually, but I had some kind of feeling that it's totally fitting. To be kind of buried alive in a blackness. Yeah, who is the old man? Um, his name is Giuseppe Spagnolo or something like that. I don't speak Italian, Libero. so I know. The Libero. The Libero of a small town which is totally... Um, devastated because nobody is living there anymore. Everybody went out years ago and I have no idea why and he's the only guy living in that place. There's nobody else and I don't know why but he went into this one place with a nice balcony with the nicest view of this um, lost place town and went into, in there to live there. And so there was a big article on I think National Geographic it was and when I saw just like this one image on National Geographic, I was like instantly, I, I, I thought I want to I wanna visit this guy. I just had the feeling that this, 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 it's this imagery, this old guy living alone in this abandoned uh, town, which is eaten up by the time and plants and everything that, is, um, uh, that, that goes with, with, with the time, um, was so fascinating to see. And so we went like from Dresden, I think it was like 2,000 kilometers down there to meet this guy. 
and I was totally nervous because I just rode with his son, I think, um, which was really cool. And he said, yeah, come by, you can film him. And, um, and I said, are you sure? Is he really there when I come? And yeah, yeah, he's there. So we went there and he was there. Actually, he really, really liked to, to work or film or be creative with me. We went around this town for a whole day. <laughs> I mean, like, like five hours or so, we went around the town. And he, he always thought we are finished at some point. But then I thought, no, let's go to this place and let's go over there. And let's go inside your uh, building again and see. And can you go to the balcony? And then, uh, which was very nice. And um, I don't really know um, what he said because he just speaks Italian. It was a yeah. It was a great day, and what's what's really fascinating is, I, I really think in the beginning he was really that unknown guy in this in this in this little small town, but since National Geographic put him like on the front page or something, um, so many people visited him to photograph him. So many people went out to make photos of him, that all his rooms are full of photographs by him. So the photographs just took the photos and sent it to him to his address in this lost town. I imagine the postcard coming into this one last town standing there. Hey, I got a new photo for you. <laughs> and he has thousands of photos in there because so many people visiting him. Actually, when you go there, you go with him to the town hall. And in the town hall, there's a big book where you write your name in. And when I looked into it, there were like people from all around the world, from Japan, uh, Vietnam, uh, New Zealand, uh, Germany, of course, a lot of people coming from Germany and Berlin um, who, who probably made a lot of photos. So people from all around the world coming there. And I think about three to five people every day. So he's really enjoying um, his, his days there and just being a, a model standing around and he, he really goes around the town and standing um, at, at the one place looking around and yeah. There was a strange feeling that everything is absolutely clear. You suddenly see that there isn't a grain of dust in the whole universe that's in the wrong place. The reason we die is to give us the opportunity to understand what life's all about. Fia bought some salami for cats. <laughs> And we, we were the ones who, who gave the cats the salami so that they can buy it. And, and they played with the pipe of the old man, which was really, really nice. Ah, that's just making off. <laughs> yeah. So everybody is asking um, how the lake shot was done. Actually, when I was doing the leg shot, um, I was going to my car and suddenly there came a big rock um, from, from up there. And it hit me on the head and suddenly I forgot it. I, I don't remember, I don't remember how I did that shot. I, I'm sorry, I really want to tell you, but I forgot. And Sophia, she was just um, collecting flowers, so she, did, she didn't see how I do the shot. So I have no idea how I did that shot. I'm sorry. So I was uh, filming the old man, um, we were coming back and um, when I saw this young dogs, um, freshly born so to speak, we were so curious for life, so everything they saw was just like new for them. And there was this, just this, this one dog who looked, looked a little bit like uh, Fufu I think from the uh, never ending story and this, this, this animal was so pure and so young and so fresh and so curious and naive. And I was just having fun with them for like one hour. So I was feeding them the salami, which we also gave to the cats. And they were so happy to have some friends over there because they were really lonely. Because it is forgetting about things that renews their wonder. Just think, when you opened your eyes on the world for the first time as a child, so yeah, we filmed all around Italy, um, in the Dolomites, there are a lot of shots where we hiked up and it was um, freaking cold in May. I, we went up to, I think, 3000 meters and um, it was the first time we actually hiked in the mountains. <laughs> and, and the crazy thing is that um, there was uh, snow all over and we were nearly slipping down uh, the mountains because we were talking just a little higher and we are there and we are there but and it was totally starting to rain and um, um, yeah like hagel I don't know what it is um, high storm coming down on us it was totally crazy all we took for this 
six hours hike <laughs> was one croissant. <laughs> It was a small croissant like that and I always thought after the next hill we, we are there, after the next hill we are there but it was always another hill, another hill, another hill and then after four and a half hours I think we went up there and it was a small shelter, we went in and eat this one croissant and it was the best croissant of our life, yeah. <laughs> um, on the other hand I, put, I also put some material in from um, Loving Lanka, so to speak, from my last film, which I didn't put in the edit because it was too spooky. Like the, the, the clown with the, with the hairs, um, which looks very scary, um, it's, 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 it's like a devil. And then I took one very, very great shot of uh, my friend Münchmax, who's a great Instagrammer. Um, and he did that one shot, yeah, I think he did in Iceland. <laughs> And when I saw this image, I, I, I phoned him and said, can you please give me that image because I, something that I, I wanted to film it in Italy, but there was, my, my waterfall was still frozen in the Dolomites and, and, and this, this guy standing there just and looking into, into his, his, his life, which, which passes by, so to speak. Um, happily I was not alone, as I told my wife Sophia came with me, which gave me great assist and um, supporting me. Um, then um, Bonnie Stoev did a great, great uh, sound design. It just flows through and there's so much detail in those sounds, um, which tells and narrates another um, level of the story. Stefan Cronus, aka Laxa, did a great job in grading. Um, we we really liked hard on the on the on the editing grading. Looked how can we develop a look that's just like fitting in there. I got a lot of feedback from friends through different versions. So I think there were like um, I think ten versions until the final edit was been done. I always sketched down a lot of things, tried out here, tried out there, and then it the edit develops in some kind of way. But I always need human. Um, perception, um, honest human perception from others that helps me to get to the result and to the feeling I will finally want to express. Um, so yeah, I think it is um, a very um, serious film in, in some kind of way. But what I felt like also at the first premiere is that when you confront yourself with this topic, you come like yin yang way uh, the other way out. You feel much happier after that. You can laugh much better. You you're, you're more relaxed because you, you, you went down this path and then you, can, then you can climb up even higher after that. That's my feeling about it. Actually, it was like a, maybe a therapy for me from my old childhood nightmares. What's also very, very interesting detail is that Alan Watts, the narrator of that uh, film, um, actually he passed away with I think 52 years or something and he, he fell asleep and never wake up, like, like he said it in the movie. That's, that's, that was his end. He went to bed and never woke up and yeah, that's it. That's how he imagined it and that's how it happened. So, whoa, that gave me goosebumps when I first read that. So yeah, um, enjoy the movie, share it, like it, um, put it around, it's all free. It's all for the um, goodness of humanity and the um, willing of art. I don't know, have fun and uh, bye. <laughs> Thank Ciao. You. Thank you. You opened your eyes on the world for the first time as a child. How brilliant colors were. What a jewel the sun was. What marvel the stars. <laughs>